Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel again. My name is Adewali Yusuf. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and also turn on your notifications. Do you know that there are 438 DART functions in Power BI? Oh, you didn't know? Yes, there are 438 DAS functions in Power BI and 63 of these functions are system functions, which I'm going to explore in this video today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to explore these 63 functions in DAX and how you can kind of use these system functions to explore your model, to see what is going on around your data set, around your model, and even within Power BI itself. So we're going to explore these 63 system functions, which 62 of them are info functions, right? In fact, all of them are info functions. They give you information about your model and about the entire data set. So let's, so let's rush into my PC and let's see how this works. Okay, so to find out if we have 438 measures in Power BI or not, so the first thing you're going to do is to make sure you turn your DAX query view on from your Power BI options, right? Once you have your DAX query view on, then go straight to your DAX query right here, before you can actually query anything, there are two options here. You can either define or you evaluate whatever you want to do. So for me, I'm going to start with evaluate. So I'm showing you three of these functions and how they work. So in your Power BI, if you type info, info dot. So in your Power BI, when you type info on your Power BI, so I'm going to type info right so when you type info dot you will see a lot of the info functions that we have we have info dot alternate definition info dot annotations info dot card dependency different type of info right but the one i want us to check first is the info dot function so i'm going to click info dot functions then i'm going to close my bracket once i close my bracket and i run this then here you're going to see all the measures that we have in power bi desktop all the functions i mean all the functions we have in power bi desktop from your date to date div date value date day e date e month and we have all the descriptions here as well so if you are thinking of learning dax i think this is the first and perfect way to learn dax if you know that we have 438 dax functions then you can start exploring these dax functions one by one then you can also copy this entire table and put it in an Excel file, just like I did here. So I put this into an Excel file where I can see all of these functions. And I also build a small pivot table report, which shows me the categories of those functions. So we have math and trigonometric for 71 measures. We have system functions, which are 63 system functions. So we're going to explore all of those 63 system functions today although we may not be able to cover all but i'm going to show you four or five of these system functions that can actually make your life easier and how to manage your model easier here the first one you can see here is the column statistics so column statistics basically give you uh provide a statistic regarding every column in your model so you kind of understand what is what what your model is all about so if i go back to my dash query and i do column statistics right columns column statistics and i just run this query right now this query is going to give me all the columns i have inside my data model and you can see all of them here you can see the table they belong to you can see the column name you can see the minimum value and the maximum value here and you can see the cardinality and the max length of each of the tests of this column right so basically column statistics give you more information then what about info a lot of people have been saying so what does info and how do i use info so if you click info dot, there are so many info functions here. There is info dot annotations, info dot whatever, but I'm going to explore four or five of these info functions now. So let's look at info columns, info dot columns, right? And you close your bracket and you just run this. So this is a little bit similar to the column statistic, but it's different, right? Because this is going to give you all the columns you have in your model and it's also going to give you the data category of those column. It's going to give you whether you have anyone eating it's going to give you whether you have the, what is the source of those column, what is the expression, if, if it is an expression or a calculated column. So it's basically going to give you all the information about your columns that you have in your data model. You can also explore info.measures as well to see all the measures you have uh, in this model. So when I select info.measures and I click on run, so here you're going to see the list of all the measures you have. If you have a description for your measures, you're going to see the descriptions here. What are the data type and the measure description, the measure expression itself. It shows the expressions of all the measures you have right there in your report. Isn't that awesome? 
You can also explore info.tables, right? To see all the tables you have in your model. So when I say info.table, I close my bracket and I run this. You can also see all the tables you have in your report. So you see all of them right here. So these are the tables you have in your report, right? Now, one of the info functions that I find very, very amazing is the CAC dependency. Info.CAC dependency, this one, right? CAC dependency is going to kind of show you the information you need to know about everything in your model and the dependency of each column, each measures, and also the tables. So when I run this, you're going to see the list of all your active relationships, all your table, the object, the expressions. You're also going to see all your expressions here. You see the columns. Is it a calculated column or a calculated table? So CAC dependency is basically going to give you almost everything, right? It's going to give you almost everything. And if you actually want to kind of stay updated about what is going on on your model, or maybe you want to build another report on what is going on on your model, you can definitely do this. And you can definitely connect an external tool to you, your model to track what is going on, what has changed in your model. Does the table change? Does the measure change? Does anything change in your model? You can kind of track that. And how do you do that? If you have an Excel or probably a Power BI, you can open a, a blank Excel or a blank Power BI. And then when once you go to the data tab, you can click on get data. And from your get data, you go to from database. So from your database, you get data from analysis. Look at this, SQL Server Analysis Services. SQL Service Server Analysis Services, right? So once you click on that, you can connect your model to this and you still be able to kind of pull your model and kind of stay updated about what is going on inside your model. So it's asking for the server name. So the way you get your server name is if you go to your model here. Now to see your server name, the first thing you're going to go to is to go to your relationship view and from your relationship view, just select model. Then you come to model. So once you select model here, you can select semantic model or any of this. Then that is going to show you the server name and the database ID of this particular data set, right? So just copy the server ID, go back to wherever you want to connect to your data. So Excel, for example, and paste the server ID here. I also go back to my model. I copy the database ID and I also paste that here. Now, another thing you can do connecting to this is you can actually signify your MDX or your dash query that you want to do. Since I'm doing a CAC dependency, which means I want to see some information about what I have in my measures. So you can actually copy this and then come back to your Excel, come back to your Excel, paste this and click on OK, right? So I just paste the measures I, I, I've already created, which is my info.cag dependencies, right? And I'm going to click connect. Then right here, you're going to see that it has brought up all the tables for me, right? And I, I can actually uh, click on transform here and then clean this data up and keep tracking of whatever is going on in my model. Another thing you can also do, let me cancel this. Another thing you can also do is you can, if you need information about table, you need information about column, and you still need information about um, your model. So you can kind of create a, a probably a measures that can track all of this information. Let's say I don't want to look at CAC dependency. I can create a measures of something that looks like this. So let me paste this measures I've already written here of something that look like this. So basically the measures I have here, I declare a variable, uh, this query I have here, I declare a variable that kind of selects info.measures. And I want to pick just these four columns from info.measures, these four columns, right? From info.measures. I declare another variable, which is table. And I just want to pick just two columns from info.tables. Um, then I did a query to kind of combine this. So I did a natural join to combine measures and table. Then I select just these four columns that I want to see. So if I run this, you're going to see all the four columns that I need, right? Look at these four columns. So these are the four columns that I need, the measure, the descriptions, the, the measure name, and also the table that they belong to. So I can copy these same measures and put it right here in my MDS or Dask query, and I can keep track of my model. Let me know if this video is very useful to you. And make sure you drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you.